Why? Nobody gurgles at monitors quite like him. Who cares? And then, uh-oh, Mando gets captured by Robo Shelob. Safety third, this is the way. So Mandalorian season three, episode two aired last week and I watched it. At least I think I watched it. The thing I watched was pretty bad. So I just wanted to confirm that I did see the correct thing. Where we left off in episode one, Mando really, really wanted to repair that super special droid that was the one and only droid that he could stand to have with him. So we begin this episode with the repair shop that we know and love. Presumably Mando will come here to get that part that he needs. Or just a completely different droid that doesn't want to go. So the spacious ship gets yet another passenger. No car seats in this universe. Baby Yoda's just gonna have to sit in Mando's lap. Safety third. Mando's teaching Baby Yoda about all the stuff that his like radars and gears and Dashboard is telling him. Points out to Baby Yoda where the planet is that they saw Bo-Katan. How far that is away from them on this this tiny little little gauge. Then they land and Mando sends out that droid to go check out the situation. That's why he brought the droid to make sure that the air is safe for him and Baby Yoda. And they're watching the droid on that same scope that they pointed the planet out on. And it looks like the droid is even further away from them than that planet was. So either that's one speedy droid or that planet was super, super close to them. So they can't see the droid on the scope anymore. And after about one minute of this, Mando knows it's time to take action. Better not risk it. Better to expose himself and Baby Yoda to the potentially toxic air that the droid was here to test so that he can go save the droid if the droid is in some kind of danger the kind of danger that the droid was here to help them detect so that they wouldn't be in danger. So Mando opens the hatch and exposes everybody to the air on this planet, but tells Baby Yoda that he'll protect Baby Yoda by closing the hatch again. I mean, I kind of feel like it's too late, but... So then Mando goes into the little cave where the droid disappeared into, and he really seems to struggle to fight off this handful of lumbering man-apes. Even with the dark saber, like... It's a near thing, which isn't terribly impressive. But Mando finds the droid, recovers him, comes back to the ship. But even though the baby wants to see him, he refuses to endanger the baby by opening the hatch again before they get the readings from the droid's samples. But the, they check the readings and like, thankfully the air is fine. So the air that Baby Yoda already breathes won't kill him. So then Mando decides to bring Baby Yoda with him into that cave where he just almost died because of those man apes and where the droid got knocked over by probably those man-apes. So it seems safe. And they go in exploring and clamoring around and Baby Yoda floats along next to Mando, listening and gurgling as he does. And then, uh-oh, Mando gets captured by Robo Shelob. ruh -roh. So Baby Yoda takes matters into his own hands and climbs out of his bassinet so he can waddle around slowly in order to mount an inefficient and ineffectual rescue. Despite Baby Yoda being able to use the force to move really huge objects in the show. The cage Mando is in presents a real struggle for the child, so Mando tells him to get out of there and go find Bo-Katan. Speed is of the essence now. Baby Yoda gets back into his bassinet and zooms on out of there, gets to the ship. I don't really know where the bassinet goes. I guess it just folds itself up and puts itself away. Baby Yoda gurgles at the dashboards, which the droid understands to mean that he should navigate the ship to Bo-Katan. Luckily, Bo-Katan has not moved from her throne. Her droid herald tells her that they have an unscheduled visitor, which presumably means that they have scheduled visitors? Bo-Katan identifies the ship as Mando's and says, let's get rid of him once and for all. She's had it. But then she realizes that it's not Mando and Mando's in danger. And she's very concerned about this. So Bo-Katan wants to be rid of Mando and then when Bo-Katan learns that she is rid of Mando, she's upset by this. So she goes with Baby Yoda back to the planet that Baby Yoda just came from. Now, Mando was, was captured or is in some kind of danger. So one might assume that Bo-Katan would want to employ stealth, possibly silence, but one is not a Mandalorian. Bo-Katan spends the entire time just chit-chatting, just... Passing the time of day with Baby Yoda. Bo-Katan does seem to be way better at fighting with the Darksaber than Mando, so I will give her that. They find Mando and 
Mando's confused, even though Mando told Baby Yoda to find Bogotan. And Bo-Katan tells Mando that your kid is quite the navigator. Nobody gurgles at monitors quite like him. Bo-Katan gets him out of there, takes care of Shelob, takes care of business. Like I said, she's a much better fighter than Mando seems to be. Then she uh, makes a little camp, starts making them soup, gives the soup to Mando. Mando somehow drinks the soup without taking his helmet off, which is a neat trick. Bo-Katan offers to take Mando to the living waters that he's got to bathe in because let's not forget he's got to bathe in some waters to redeem himself. And he thanks her and she says, don't thank me till you've seen him. And then Baby Yoda farts. <coughs> you and me both, baby. You and me both. As they're making their way to the waters, once again, not really concerned about being in any danger or needing to be stealthy. They just chit-chat away. Don't worry about any detection. Bo-Katan tells him about growing up as a princess and making her dad proud while she went through some ceremonies and recited some stuff. Uh, she sounds kind of sarcastic, so Mando's like, maybe your dad really was proud of you. And Bo-Katan says, oh, I know he was because I didn't embarrass him. To which Mando replies, he sounds like an interesting man. He does? Then it becomes clear that Bo-Katan was not being sarcastic. She says that he was a great man, died defending Mandalore. To which Mando replies, this is the way. So then they get to the living waters, uh, but Bo-Katan says, hang on, hang on, I gotta read you some exposition. So she goes over to this plaque, tells us about the beastie that used to be in the water that they defeated, and that's why that beastie's skull is like the symbol of their people. I wonder if this will become important later. Uh, so Mando, still wearing his full armor and helmet, climbs into the waters and then immediately disappears from view. Now you might think that it's because a beastie grabbed him, or you might think it's because he's wearing a full suit of Beskar armor, which is probably pretty dense and heavy. Regardless, luckily Bo-Katan is there to save the day, so she dives in after him, also in full armor. And she finds him at the bottom of the river, sea, lake, what, a pond? She finds him at the bottom. There's no beastie, he's just on the bottom. So I guess it was the weight of the armor? Maybe he should have taken it off before climbing it? Oh, wait, no. As she's bringing him up out of the water, her little helmet headlight shows us the giant beastie. But the beastie is just chilling. It's not trying to attack them. It doesn't seem to have been responsible in any way for Mando sinking into the water. So uh, beastie's motivations remain unclear. And uh, yeah, that's, that's the end of the episode. What did we learn? We learned that Bo-Katan is better at using a darksaber and that the living waters have something living in them. I mean, I for one... I'm dying to see the next episode. I have so many questions. Why? Who cares? Guess we'll just have to stay tuned to find out.